I'm Matt, um, new. Um, so a few years ago, I started in web development. I started out playing with Django and Python, and then I built my first real app using Ruby on Rails. And that was around the time everyone started making JavaScript applications in the browser, so I turned that app into a backbone front-end app talking to Rails, which I turned into a JSON API. And then I discovered Node.js, and for the last like three years, I've been working mainly in JavaScript. And I was really excited about this idea of being able to write the same code on the server as runs in the client. Um, but with Node.js for the longest time, it was like this promise that was still out there that you couldn't really do that well. And so really recently, there have been some tools that have started to make web development a lot more like the way I've wanted to do it for years. And right now, I've been focused the last number of months on using React and Firebase together. So I'm just going to go over this. So what we're going to look at here, I've just been building a personal website, like a blog, that uses these tools as an experiment. Um, so we're just going to look at how that was done. So um, this blog you can think of as being broken up into different pieces. Uh, React. How many of you are familiar with React? Some of you, maybe half and half. So it's a way of building applications out of components. And when you see this page, this page is composed of a hierarchy of components. So I have one big component that holds everything. And then each of these blocks you can think of, I have like a main content component. And in my sidebar, I've got like a header component and some navigation components. And each component takes care of um, sort of its own concerns. So I'll get into that a little bit more so you can see this. Now where I'm going with this is that these web the web page is obviously driven by data. When you're looking at a blog post, that data is in a database somewhere, and somehow you have to get it from this database into the page. And likewise, my list of topics and people on the side and my title of my site, that's all stored in a database somewhere. So what I'm asking is, what is the most simple possible way that I can get data from my database into this page without thinking about it a whole lot? And ideally, since more and more of the web is real time, I'd like that data to change every time Every time something in the database changes, I want the page to update. So React, I mentioned it, you build websites using a hierarchy of components. A key feature of React is what they call a virtual DOM, which means, um, I don't know how to explain it. So when I take a comp component, I feed it some data. Maybe it's a JSON object, which has all my post data. And React will compute exactly how that data should appear in the web page, but it doesn't actually generated on the web page right away, it has this virtual DOM, an intermediate web layer, where to react, it understands exactly what the web page is going to look like, but it doesn't write it to the browser yet. What it does every time you feed React component new data, it computes exactly the representation of what it should be, and then it compares that with the last um, update that it made to the browser. And whatever has changed on the page, it then finds out that like minimum set of changes that it needs to make to the actual browser window to update the content. So in a way, every time like a person is added to the list on the side, React might like uh, recompute the entire page layout, but it's extremely fast because it's not touching the browser until it figures out that oh, I just need to add one person to this list in the corner. So it makes the development very declarative. If, um, you just need to know what your data is. You change the data, and React takes care of. Uh, moving things around in the browser. You don't have to muck around at all with the DOM itself, like moving divs around and using jQuery to reverse from this node to that node and copy and clone and all of this. You just don't have to think about it. Uh, React also makes it very easy to render these uh, components on the server. It doesn't matter whether you're on the, on the client or the server. If you feed a component the same data, you'll get the same result. React can then bundle up a fully rendered um, page to the client. And once it loads in your browser, then React sort of takes over and it becomes alive again, and your JavaScript works. This is the briefest example of a component you can think of. It just has a render method, which um, that looks like HTML. It's called JSX. It's it's like pseudo HTML. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it does make it easy to write um, something if you're familiar with HTML. A little bit quicker. A guy named Andrew Pop built. Um, a mix-in for React that lets you have asynchronous state for a component, which means I can say to my site title component, hey, before you render, go and fetch something from the web somewhere, or do anything asynchronously. You can just have any um, arbitrary async asynchronous function that's called before a component is rendered. Those two things other people built, what I've been working on, a few things 
React subscriptions is a, I have a notion of a subscription object with a subscribe function and an unsubscribe function that the developer has to write. And the idea is that uh, you can tell a component to subscribe to data, and for as long as that component is on the page, it will have the current data. When you write a subscription object, the subscribe function gets a callback, and you just call that callback with the new data anytime the data changes, and then everything else is taken care of and sent to the component. Now we get into Firebase. So Firebase is a database that is designed around real-time data. Um, I'm going to run over time. Um, so this Firebase, gives, when you create a database, it gives you a live view of your data. And it, it's hierarchical as well. So I can look here. I have elements. And each element has a body and a date and an image and owner, this sort of thing. And what you can do in your code is give Firebase the path that we just saw, a hierarchical path to your data. Give it a path, and it will fire a callback either in your Node.js server or in the browser every time that data changes. It makes it very easy. You know what data you have. Firebase will tell you every time it's changed. And they also have a bunch of collections, so you can push things. Um, so you can have like a collection of, of posts of some kind. So then what I wrote, because um, I made this little React subscriptions uh, mix in, and I made a very easy way to create a subscription object out of a Firebase reference. So if I know that I have data stored under settings slash site title, then I just say fire subscription dot text uh, setting site title, and it will generate an object with a subscribe and unsubscribe function that can be put into the component, and it will subscribe to that content and keep it up to date. Um, if anyone's used Firebase, it's really limited to the API for querying, so you have to maintain a lot of manual indexes and invoke some tools to make that easier. And here we have a subscribe by index where I can, at one path, I'll store a list of documents that are stored somewhere else. And I just need to give it the list of where the index is, and then it'll fetch the, the actual documents for me. Now, that was a lot of work. And now we get to do some, this was sort of the end result, um, autonomous input forms. So let's say I have my site title here. I want to be able, as a developer, I don't want to have to think very much. I just want to say, OK, require React fire forms. I have um, some, like FF bug input is my form component. And I just, all I do is I pass it, they tell the label is title, and I pass it a Firebase reference, and I put it on the page. I don't have to think about all of the other subscription stuff. And I have a field. So let's click settings. And I have a field here that I can edit. And then this component, because it has its own subscription to the data, it knows that it's been edited. And so it gives me a little save function, which I can save. And then it's gone through Firebase and back and updated again on my, on my page. So what I want to do is improve this and build a more of a collection of form components so that you can, uh, I just think if you, if you can abstract away all the other stuff that I talked about, you can just have a blank canvas, use these kinds of components, and very easily make uh, an app built on data that changes all the time. So that's it.